Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Halloween edition of Lurking for Legends. We are having a great time over here. We are all dressed up, if you can see, like what we're wearing. Um, it's We're just going to have a great time tonight. We have the perfect author here with us tonight as well. So as always, welcome to Lurking for Legends. We are a live video cast where we talk about talk with people from all walks of the publishing industry. And I'm Christy Stratus, the author of the Dark Victoriana Collection, which is the perfect time to read. And my co my awesome co-host is Richard H. Stevens, and he's the author of the epic fantasy series. Get ready, there's a lot of them because he is so prolific. The Legends of the Lurker, <laughs> Bainbridge Companion Novels, Soul Forge Saga, and the High Cliff Guardians. Lots more to come. So Lurking for Legends is a live interactive broadcast, and we encourage viewers to chime in with any questions you may have for our guests or any comments that you want to leave for us. And we love putting them up for you guys. So tonight we are excited to have, like I said, the perfect guest, dark fantasy author and paranormal author, Laura DeLeo. Welcome, Laura. It's great to have Welcome, you. Laura. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Perfect timing. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's the perfect time to have you because like, you know, you have, well, you tell us about yourself um, just as a sneak peek that you have a vampire series. So it's especially perfect. And you oh, guys yeah, are I, so <laughs> anyway, yeah, you go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, um, I have actually been writing for many, many years, just didn't really do anything publishing wise until um, I started looking around 2011 but i actually um wrote and copyrighted the immortal kiss series in um, 1996. so it was like way before any of the vampire people you know kind of got all their um books like twilight and things like that so um i was <laughs> probably missed that boat when not trying to do anything with it but i just wrote it all because I loved Anne Rice Vampire Chronicles, loved her to death, and I couldn't wait for her next book. So I started my own series and I just wrote it and put it in a um, chest. And then when I was moving one, um, I found it and I'm like, I started reading. I'm like, wow, I should really do something with it. So then I started reaching out to publishers and I got two publishers that were interested and um, I went with one and I published um, this first book and the second book through them. And then I really wanted more creative freedom. So I went out on my own and I actually um, started my own publishing company as well, which I ended up dissolving just uh, this year just because, oh, my gosh, this California. I don't know if anyone lives in California, but the what California, the state of California charges you for an LLC is ridiculous. So. Um, now I just publish under my name, um, but I have three books um, in the series, and then I have a standalone um, vampire book. So in the series, I have Immortal Kiss, Bound by Blood, uh, and The Vampire Within, and then I have a standalone, The Vow. And then um, I have a dark fantasy standalone called The Soul Collector, and then I just uh, published a sci-fi fantasy, The Doll. But I've been, you know, I majored in fine arts, creative brain, can't, you know, never turn it off. And then I also um, rescue basset hounds. I have four of them um, at home. And uh, my day job really isn't very fun. It, it's very boring. It's, uh, I'm accounts payable manager and I pay all the bills for a company. So <laughs> that's a little bit about me. And, Star I, and I'm a Starbucks fan, love Starbucks coffee. Nice. Accounts payable isn't boring. You get to uh, spend all the money, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Not, <laughs> it isn't as glamorous. I mean, you have vendors that are, you know, constantly, where's my money? So that's, you always get that kind of, you know, thing sure. to deal with. But um, I have a staff underneath me that deals with a lot of that. I only have to get involved if it gets, you know, people get irate or something like that. But uh, mm. uh, but it, I work for a large company, so they're, you know, pretty good with paying all their bills on time. Great. Yeah, absolutely. So since we are here, you know, on the Halloween episode, let's start with your vampire series. Okay. I would love to hear more in depth about that. I know that you were inspired by other people writing vampire things. I believe, I 
think I saw some, I hope I'm right. Um, Interview with a Vampire was one of your inspirations. Am I right? Uh, yes, Anne Rice. So the first um, I, re I wrote, I, I'm sorry, I read um, her, the Interview with a Vampire. Oh my gosh, just fell in love with Lestat. Perfect vampire. I also like Dracula too, but um, mm. Lestat's like my favorite. And then Spike from um, Buffy. So, but I, um, I really like that uh, Anne Rice's style of writing. So um, that really inspired me. And so I created a um, series where I used the, an Egyptian myth um, where the, how the original vampires were created. And this human girl um, is kind of in the middle of it, doesn't really know anything, realize it. And then later on in, in life, she finds out about what, why she's tied to this particular vampire and, um, you know, and then it kind of just goes on with the uh, series with the um, her first book is usually about her and, and how she's tied to this one God. And then the second book is kind of like um, goes more into detail about the gods, vampire gods. <clears throat> and then the third book is more, again, there's a um, teenager that, you know, inadvertently gets thrown into all this mess and how he has to deal with uh, the issues that arise from um, a vampire kind of like using his body, so to speak, as a host for his soul. So mm -hmm. kind of those, that's kind of, yeah. and there's, a, um, I've left it open where I can write um, a couple more um, characters into the series if I um, choose to. Nice. Okay, so this is not necessarily a finished series. Um, yeah, I haven't, you know, it kind of, uh, it isn't finished because I can, like I said, um, go ahead and continue it if, if I, you know, once I get done with some other books that I'm working on. But um, I have gotten a lot of people that want to hear more about certain characters. So I plan to do one of, you know, about one of the characters that I keep getting you know, asked about, you know, what would he, but we, we want to hear more about him. We want to hear more about him. So I'm definitely probably want, want to do that. And then I have, so the vampire gods, um, when they, you know, um, were created, uh, they didn't know how to control their hunger. So they were just killing off humans left and right. And so they decided to create um, a council that would control them. So those were um, called the old ones and they made all the laws and rules for vampirism. And there, a lot of people are asking about a book for the, about how to, the old ones were created. So that could be a book as well. That's, that's really cool. I was just uh, looking at your covers online there and uh, a lot of them look like they're models that would appear on the cover. Is that something that you have gone in ahead and got the models for the covers or is that something your cover artist has done for you? Um, so I, um, being having a fine arts background and majoring in fine arts, I design all my covers. The Bound by Blood though, we, um, I had a photographer friend who did get a model and um, she posed for the cover for Bound by Blood. But all the other ones are, I get images. Um, and then I tell my um, graphic designer, with these images, I want this to be, you know, um, the main image and then take these images and try to build this. And I give them a whole, you know, descriptive um, outline of what it is I want in my cover. And uh, he creates it. He's he's always done amazing work. I don't know what I would do without me if he ever decided he didn't want to, you know, do the work anymore. He does amazing covers. But I I give him all I you know I give him all the images and then I tell him how I want you know what I want as an end result with the image and then he you know we go you know trial by error keep you know um, back and forth back and forth but. So that was one of the reasons why I left the publishing company, the traditional publishing, because they, um, Immortal Kiss, the cover that they chose for Immortal Kiss looked like it was a romance. So when readers were first getting this book, being my first book, they, readers were upset because they were like, this isn't romance. There's no 
you know, why would, you know, they were just really irritated about the fact that they were thought they were buying some kind of paranormal romance where it, it does have a little bit of romance in it, but not like, you know, what they were expecting. So, and then I changed the, that cover uh, completely. So nobody would have any kind of, you know, misinterpret misinterpretation of what that book was about. No, definitely not. So uh, with the, the blood dripping off the lips and then the, the graveyard in the back, in the foreground, I guess, uh, with the face behind it. So, yeah, I think it would be, it's pretty genre specific now. Yeah. I, I think the really neat thing about it, especially with uh, your Bound by Blood, uh, is that I like I have a series, uh, Legends of Lurker, and I, I have a, I just got stock art of a person who dressed up in period garb, and I made her the cover image and then had the cover designer design it. But, you know, Anyone else can get her as well. So I have seen her pictured somewhere else with different backgrounds and stuff like that. And oh, when you see that, you go, oh. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many books out there that most people probably never see her again. But uh, because it's my book, I see her the odd time. I go, oh. Yeah. So by you doing what you did, like no one's, you know, she she might pose for other stuff, but certainly not the way you have her. So she's yeah. going to be very unique to you, which is very nice. Um, he He's a great photographer, too, because I bought that goblet. I bought that online and I wanted blood coming out of it and dripping um, out of the goblet. And he created that. He he made all this fake blood. And I came to his house and um, watched this, him do the shoot. And he, he was getting it. Every, I'm like, oh, my gosh, you're, you know, the hardwood floor. It was just all over the place. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, how are you going to get that off? And he goes, oh, it's just it was some kind of food stuff. I don't know what he, it was some kind of food stuff that he made with the blood, but it looked so real and it was like dripping off of her hands. It it, it just was, uh -huh. he did a really good job. He certainly did. I thought he, I thought he drew it on afterwards. I'm looking at the picture now thinking, and when I looked at it, I figured, okay, well, he got her to hold the goblet and then drew that stuff on after, but no, it was actually it was coming out really after it was dripping all over the place. And, you know, I felt sorry for her because she's like, oh, <laughs> she didn't want to get it on her clothes. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's really neat. Yeah. That's really cool. That's an amazing kind of thing. I, I don't think I personally know anybody who has had like a real model or anything like that for their mm -hmm. books. So that is especially cool, I think. Did yeah. you, um, you know, you said the traditional company that you were originally going to go with gave you, uh, was going to do a cover that made it look like romance. Of course, we all know how important it is for the cover to look like the genre even if your blurb is brilliant and you know it tells you what the genre is the cover still has to look like it so i just out of interest um were you able to like talk to them at all i mean obviously you left you know you decided not to go with them but just out of interest you know um did you at any point say like can't you change this why are you doing this and i wondered um, there i did i did um i did talk to them about it because i um you know when that when I saw it, I was like, hmm, I, I don't think so. Mm. Uh, but, you know, they just, I didn't get, really get a choice. And um, also, too, I, with the editing, I felt like they didn't do um, a very good job with their editors. And I felt like there was um, errors after um, it was published and it had to be corrected after the fact. So that was a little bit... Um, disturbing too. Definitely. Yeah, that would be very upsetting, I can imagine. So um, one thing I wanted to bring up was <laughs> one of my, actually somebody a lot of people know here put on Twitter once is uh, JD Estrada. If you guys, a lot of people in the audience will know him. He writes kind of all genres and one of his series has vampires in it. It has some paranormal characters. And um, I don't remember if he said this was in a review or or just a reader talking to him saying, you know, they were really disappointed that there were vi vampires in the book and that like kind of vampires are over and done with. Oh, um, yeah. I, I was going to ask for your response because like in my opinion, that can never be really done. There's always readers looking for that. So I was wondering what you thought. Well, there's, uh, there's always people that are going to say the vampires like out, you know, and mm -hmm but they're never going to know everybody is going to love vampires forever. I mean, I, I, but I do feel like the vampires like totally changed from, you know, like the early, you know, movies, they were 
monsters. They looked incredibly scary. And as mm-hmm. the years, you know, grew on, they turned into these like, you know, you know, handsome and beautiful like creatures that everybody's like drawn to. And I think um, we can thank Anne Rice for that. I feel like she was the first one that kind of made vampires more of a, you know, beautiful like looking um, character, but truly they um, are really creepy, scary um, creatures. I don't think that they're, those kinds of monsters will ever be out of style. But I, I, I had, I did have that happen though when I, when I was looking for a publisher when I decided to publish my books. You know, there was tons of, um, you know, publishers in the paranormal realm, but they were in, you know, uh, just gotten so many um, submissions from vampire books when Twilight um, exploded um, in the, you know. Uh, Liter- in the books as well as the movies and they didn't want to they just didn't want to have anything to do with vampire books anymore and so that's where I was like wow you know I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get published because of you know all of the fact that they don't the most editors and agents didn't want to have anything to do with vampire stories anymore because there was just too many of them out there mm-hmm. but that um that uh, mentality is gone and you know people are still, you know, really excited about vampire books and, um, you know, they'll, I don't think they'll ever, ever go out of style, but I wanted to with, I didn't want it to be labeled as just a vampire, um, author. So that's when I started, um, doing different kinds of stories to show that, you know, I could branch out and do different things, but I, I truly love the vampires, the probably the best. (laughs) They're great creatures to write about. Absolutely. And I, I just want to go back real quick to something you said. And you said um, it used to be uh, that ampi- vampires were really like creepy, scary, you know, disturbing creatures. And you mentioned something about, um, the, I think you mentioned um, Dracula. And I wasn't sure if you were referring to like Bram Stoker's original Dracula, which, you know, the vampire is terrifying. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not romanticized at all. It's not what it turned into. Yes. And later, you know, Dracula. So, yeah, I really appreciate that uh, that comment that you made that vampires used to be like actually scary. Yeah, not, and so, not so sexy. No, and I saw this um, movie while you know the vampire craze was going on, and they were all these beautiful creatures. And it was called I don't know if you've seen it, but it's called Thirty Days of Night. Those the vampires that are in these people get um, like. I can't remember the premises of it, but they're stuck in this um, precinct and these vampires come out and they are, none of them are attractive. They're truly creepy looking characters and true to, you know, like what a vampire probably would be like if one was, you know, (laughs) wandering around It probably wouldn't be some, you know, attractive. I mean, you know, if they have no blood and they're dead, then, you know, I'm sure they're just, you know, and, um, not going to be the most attractive looking. And there's another book out there that I read a long time ago that was called They Thirst. I can't remember the author, but it was a vampire book too. And it's really creepy and scary. But I don't, I, I, mine are kind of like in between. I always, I have one that's got, it's totally flawed. You know, he's, you know, more human. He's, you know, more, you know, um, willing to be nice and then I have the other side too of a vampire too where they're just humans are nothing but food and you know so I try to mix it up so I don't have a bunch of you know kind um you know beautiful creatures in the books so I try to you know make sure that there's um you know an evil one as well So I'm just sitting here listening to you and I'm admiring your costume you wore. Like I, I kind of dumped this on you uh, last week when I spoke to you uh, through messengers, you know, talking this, telling you that Chrissy and I are going to dress up because this is the last show before Halloween. Yes. And it looks great. And Thank I you. think we're talking about this off air. That, uh, do you actually, before we get any further, do you actually go to book signings and book shows and stuff like that? Um, I did before um, COVID. Right. And, um, and then once COVID happened, you know, I think a lot of po- you know, the bookstores in my area, the, you know, there's a lot of like local bookstores that did, you know, the local authors. 
Um, they had a hard, really hard time during, you know, what happened and a lot of them closed. So now everything is pretty much virtual. And uh, the main library that um, is here too, they do a once a year um, author event. And this year too, it's going to be virtual. So it's just not the same, you know, um, you can't go in and like, uh, California is one of the um, states that's really strict with, um, you know, the COVID rules. So you can't really, you know, it's not the same when you can't go in and meet, you know, people and, um, you know, talk with them about your book and sign your book. But, you know, I try to do a lot of stuff on, on online. And um, we just had a Halloween book party in, in my group. And um, which turned out, you know, it worked pretty well. It turned out very good. And um, I, uh, my new book that ha has, is not Vampire, but I was able to, you know, sign um, two copies of that book and um, give that to a couple people. So I try to do, you know, um, as much as I can, but it's just, you know, in person isn't happening anymore. Oh, no, for sure. The reason I said that is I, I just think that, uh, if you wore your costume, like even what you're wearing now, if you went to maybe not a library, but uh, to maybe a Comic Con or all these other places that are more theme oriented, oh, yeah, Comic Con. That would be wonderful uh, if you dressed up for that. We, you know, we have Comic Con here, but we it got canceled because of COVID. Because I was going to have a table, um, you know, for my books and everything, but they canceled COVID and because uh, of COVID, and I don't, I have not heard whether they're going to maybe 2022 i don't know i haven't even heard anything yet yeah i got my fingers crossed that things will start opening up in 2020 oh my gosh i hope so too <laughs> yeah oh i love doing them doing the book events and stuff like that i did so, I, I did a few book events um too there's in some that were in la uh because it's close to san diego within driving but i used i because of my um basset hounds that are you know um rescues and they have medical conditions i can't travel as much because then i have to have somebody that's going to come and do the medications and nobody wants to do that so i try to find the you know the um, events that are close where i can drive to for sure and just uh with the theme that we dressed up because halloween is just around the corner uh the day after halloween all saints day or uh, is the beginning of November, and of course, as a writer, we all know that that means that's the beginning of NaNoWriMo. And I, I was telling Christy before today that uh, I wasn't going to do it. I never did it. I, and then by November fifteenth, I was sick of listening to authors say NaNoWriMo, NaNoWriMo. So this year, I figured I'm going to participate so that I'm really going to enjoy it and partake in it. So. Is, is that something that you ever do or? I've never tried it. No, I've never done it. I've kind of just, um, I, I've seen a lot of authors like, you know, posting about it, but I've never, uh, maybe it's just because I've been involved in, um, when in this, whatever it was going on, I've been involved in something else. So I've not like participated. So, um, but it's interesting, definitely something I've, you know, like, thought about but it's it the timing is just never seems to work for me yeah for sure and yeah that was gonna happen to me again this year but i altered my plan so i could uh do that instead of what i was planning on doing so and christy is now on my friends list so uh, i'm going to make sure that she gets her fifty thousand words in this this year so, uh, so yeah it's <laughs> you know i'm not one of these people that can you know because i see like i can't remember um I was in a uh, face group before I started my face group group. I was in another group and they were, you know, we had these challenges where we had to, you know, um, you know, how much uh, words we had done. It wasn't that it was just for that group. And I was like, how in the heck did these people get that those how, you know, that many words I'm, you know, like I'm, you know, I thought I was doing really good with like, you know, maybe 5,000. And then the one girl posted, she'd done 50,000 in a day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how does she do that? But, then you know, I, you know, I don't know what the, her situation is, but I have a full-time Monday through Friday job. So I can't, I have to do writing on, um, you know, at night or on the weekends. And then I have my dogs that take a lot of time too. So but yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I'm. I just. I. I don't know how. How. I mean, 
I can't fathom how much how that much wor words come out of somebody in that in one 24 hour period. I think we were in the same group uh, the science science fiction uh, romance fan writer or something like that. And they used to have a, was, a, um, a monthly chart where you kept readers, track of how many words you wrote. The Reader's Lounge or something? Yes, like? yes, yes. Yep. And then it was and then it, that was for the readers. And then they had the other for the authors. That's right. Yep. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, I don't think I'm in that anymore just because I was, in, you know, I'm trying to wean myself off a lot of social media so I can actually write. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah, actually, I found that uh, productive because <laughs> it almost made you want to write just so you can get your words in and post it. So everyone would go, oh, wow. But no, like some people would post that they wrote 10,000, 20,000 words in a day. And I go, really? I'm one, was, one, that was, one was actually 50,000. She was 50,000. I was like, how? Yeah, they got to dictate. There's, I can't see anyone typing that fast, but I. <laughs> Yeah. No. I'm a I'm a hunt and peck typer, so I'm very well, slow. Well, I I'm one of those types of when I write too. I don't just write to get it out. I write it and then I have to look at it to make sure that I do. I like this. Did I say exactly what I wanted to say? Does it sound right? So I kind of write and edit at the same time. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I do you know another edit once it's done, but I I can't just write something just to get it out. I it has to sound halfway decent so right. that could be why some of these people get as many words out because they just you know get it all out of their you know head and then they go back and polish it yeah that's probably true which brings us to the very natural question that we like to ask most writers uh, are you a plotter or a pantser or in between i don't even know what that means is that what is that? <laughs> so with, with plotting, um, if you're a plotter, you write outlines and then you write the book. With a pantser, you just write by the seat of your pants. And then there's people in between who sort of, yeah, I'm a pantser too. And uh, there's people in between plantsers who sort of might have like a vague outline or something like oh, that. No, 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 yeah, I, the way. Um, what was the names again? A plotter? And a pantser? Was, I'm, I'm not the panther though. Yeah. Yeah, pan pantser. Yeah. yeah. We are yeah. all pantsers Let's here. Pantsers unite. Yes. I've never heard of that before. I wonder why I've never heard of that before. We'll have to create a group or something. <laughs> <laughs> Our own group. Yeah, I've done, I've done, that, that was, um, I'm surprised I haven't heard of something like that with all the, you know, the writing um, groups that I've been in. Huh. But that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I don't do any outlines. Me neither. Everything Me neither. just is in my head and, you know, and I, and I'll actually be, you know, I'll be doing, you know, whatever. And then I'll, an idea pops up and I go grab a notebook and write it mm -hmm. down. And so I can't, so I don't forget it. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So do you kind of follow your characters? Like maybe you come up with characters or they come to you and then, and then you're just writing kind of what they tell you to in a way. Is that how yes. you work? Because I, the doll, actually, when I first started the doll, um, it was going to be horror. And as I started writing it, the characters were going in a different direction than I had originally thought they would. And then I was like, wow, this doesn't seem like it should be horror anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to need to change all this and, and go with what my characters are telling me to, to do. So. Definitely. I, yeah, that's definitely, I always find that to be the best way. If I try to control it too much, uh, it just doesn't come out. It will just stop. Like my creativity will just stop if I'm trying to control what my characters are doing. They, oh, yeah. they have the control. And they I'm totally have the control. control. Yes. <laughs> I think it's more exciting I, that way. That you don't know mm -hmm. what they're going to do. You don't know uh, what they're going to make you do as far as writing them out of trouble or <laughs> and, and, and it's almost like watching a movie as you write the book because they do things totally bizarre that you had no idea they were going to do. So you actually get to see the story unfold in front of your eyes as opposed to having it all laid out and then just kind of filling in the details. So I enjoy doing that so much better. I generally know the ending. I just don't know how to get there. Yeah, I, just, I usually... I the character out and watch Exactly. Mm -hmm. I usually know the how it's going to start and how it's going to end but I don't know anything in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My endings, I always have an idea of the ending. And for me, it always turns out wrong. So I'm like <laughs> heading toward that ending. And then uh, I always end up just rewriting what I thought it was going to be. It always ends up pretty different 
but uh, yeah, I head toward that goal anyway, just the way you guys do for sure. Yeah. I, I, none of my, no one in my family is um, creative. Uh, you know, I'm the only one, my boat, my, um, both my sisters are teachers. And then my brother is, um, he went into like um, pest control. So I'm the only one that kind of my, in my family, my grandmother was um, creative. She had her own um, business and did painting and she made furs. So um, I kind of took after her and, but nobody in my family, and there's no other artists or um, writers or, uh, you know, they're all like very um, analytical, you know, people that they, they don't have, you know, they couldn't have come up with something and they're, they're all like, and, you know, like amazed too. They're like, how do you come up with these ideas? How, you know, how does it happen? And I'm like, oh, it just <laughs> comes into my head. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Kind of but which is interesting because you're a number cruncher as well for your company. So that uh, yeah. you're also very analytical at the same time. So you've got the best of both worlds there. Well, the right I, animals, I, <laughs> I don't know so much about that because I, I would do things. I, I don't like the uh, people that are in accounting, they are so methodical and they have like this analytical, you know, um, process that they go through that I'm like, I'm so bored with it. I, and I don't get it. I'm like, why do we even have to do this? Why can't we do a shortcut and go this route? Because it just doesn't make any sense to me. When I, I worked at, um, a company called Qualcomm, they make a lot of, you know, like phones and things. And they were real big on having, uh, like companies come in and do a lot of like, um, testing and meetings and, we had the this group come in and they were, you know, testing to see where what career you should be in. And they I was when I did the test, it was like they said you should not be in accounting or accounts payable at all. You your brain is creative. You need to be doing something creative. But um, and I kind of knew that because I but I just kind of um, I when in the, I try to do automation to a lot of the um, processes where I work. So I, I'm using my creative brain to think of the automation to, for the system to do the process. So I'm always designing. So I think that's where I really like it. But when it gets to the numbers part, I'm like, oh, it's just mm -hmm. boring. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't enjoy that either. <laughs> that, yeah. The analytical part, I understand. <laughs> Eventually, too, um, I'm planning on uh, completely um, going away from uh, the desk day job and, do, you know, doing something more on, you know, I've gotten so much with this group that I have for Facebook and I do a lot of stuff for authors. So I, I want to tend to maybe do something more along that line and then, you know, focus more on my writing. So I'm kind of thinking that, you know, maybe next year it might be some where I do something part time so I can focus more on um, what I really like to do in the books and um, writing and maybe get back to some painting and my art and things like that. That's fantastic. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. So we can't have you on here without you. You've mentioned their group a couple of times now. So I want to uh, go into a little bit more depth about this group because I find I didn't realize how big it was until last week when I went to finish up our show uh, last Tuesday's Lurking for Legends and I wanted to do a bit of research on you and I realized that you were the founding uh, person of the book Hangout Spot. It's a Facebook group about authors where authors and uh, readers come together and they discuss books and I, I've been in so many different kinds of groups and there's so much BS in those groups and I find the book Hangout Spot is very well run and it's very on topic. And when I looked at the numbers, I, I actually had to inbox you to make sure that I actually had the numbers right because I didn't believe it. <laughs> and it was 317,000 people were in this Facebook group. That was last week. 333 before, now. <laughs> before we came on this tonight, I went in there again. There's almost 334,000 members in there. And that's, that's incredible. Like there, that means that's almost 
two and a half thousand people a day are joining this group right now. Yeah, it's insane. I I have no idea. I mean, when I first started it, um, you know, I wanted a place where authors and readers could go and, and you know, share their love for books because it's usually it's just either focused on an author or it's focused on a reader. It doesn't combine the two and you can't have one without the other. And so um, I, you know, started out, it was, you know, it was going really well and it just steadily kept growing. And then some of the things that I feel like that we do drew in, um, you know, more participation, more members. And um, before I knew it, it just had exploded with, you know, tons and tons of members and were the big one of the largest Facebook groups out there. Um, and I, my, um, the original, it was me and on one on another person, I started it and I asked her if she would help me because I didn't know what I was doing. And she would had been on Facebook for a really long time. And then she ended up leaving um, when it started getting really big because she didn't have enough time. And then one of the guys that won, um, we used to do cover wars. And one of the guys that won cover wars, he really wanted to be um, an, an admin. So it, it was me and him. And then we, it just started getting so big. And Facebook made a change to public groups, which anyone could join. And then we were having, it was just like um, inundated with spam sometimes. So then um, we brought in a bunch of mods and then we changed a couple of things. And then I just feel like it just, people are just really happy to be able to discuss their books. They want, they, there's recommendations for books. There's people that say, you know, they're searching for a book. Can I, can I have help? There's people that post their book pictures. It's just a, a place where book lovers can, you know, share everything about books that you know and they find uh, and the authors love it because a lot of the members that are readers are looking for books and they'll post what they're looking for and an author will say oh hey i you know i they'll comment and say i you know have a book you might like i've done it too so you know it just works um and now that we we've just recently made a change that we did when we had the book party we had to turn off commenting and we had to um do post approval so it, you know everything for the authors wasn't being in intermingled with the members posting things so we really liked um the post approval because it we can weed out all of the you know things that um shouldn't be coming into the group before the actual members see it and that i think has made a huge difference to uh, the members are don't have to like be reporting stuff or or messaging us saying, why, you know, why is this being, you know, what's this about? Why is this in the group? So, but um, there's really a lot of, you know, people are just loving the group and just having a great time because they can express, you know, everything and anything about books. With 334,000 <laughs> members, well, I guess the number's mind boggling. Yeah. Is that hot. I just can't imagine how you moderate the, that, especially now that you're, uh, uh, you know, uh, proofreading the post uh, ahead of time. Like, yeah, you must have um, a lot of people in the background that are helping well, out. Well, we we brought we had it was me and the my admin and my other ad. It's I'm an admin and I have another the the person that won the cover wars and then we brought in six mods, and um, four of them were doing like a really great job and two of them just weren't really doing anything. So we um, told them that we were, you know, really happy that, you know, what their work, but we really need somebody to, you know, be a full time. And then uh, once those two people, um, we removed them as mods, the rest of the mods, they were like, we have such a good vibe going. We don't want to bring any more mods in because we really work really well together and we want it. And then I said, you know, that's okay. You know, if you guys feel you want to stay you know with just the you know the team as is but i said if it keeps growing um you know we are going to have to probably bring in some other people because you're not going to be able to manage it and they're like no no we want we want to just keep it the team as it is so they're really they're really a close close-knit team which i think helps a lot too 
and and they um, each each person has you know kind of does it at different times too. Um, so, but I I really like it because I've been able to go in there to see what is being you know um, be prior to the my biggest thing is that you know this is it's my kind of I feel responsible it's my group I created it. it's under it's my name a lot of people go look at my author page. I want my reputation to be, you know, um, something that book lovers, you know, will be appreciative to. So I'm really happy when I can look at the post prior to them coming into the group because I don't want the members to see some of this stuff. Kind of these random weird videos and, you know, somebody trying to sell cash and, you know, um, these WhatsApp app things. And so <laughs> I guess the bigger, you know, we didn't have any of that when we were a small group. I guess the bigger your group, the more people are going to try to you know, get something out of it. So, but I, I'm very, I'm, I'm in awe of how big and, and successful the group is. It's, but you know, I, the, my, uh, my other admin and then the um, mods, you know, I couldn't thank them enough. They do a great job. That's incredible that four mods and two admins <laughs> and you guys are handling that many members you know, yeah. kudos to you guys for uh for doing that that's thank amazing you. thank you so before we wrap up for i can't believe our 40 minutes have gone by uh, already uh where can we find your books if people are looking for your books where can they go to find them um i'm on all online re retailers so um amazon barnes and noble uh, i can't remember um it's so I use um, Ingram, um, and uh, so since I'm self-publishing, I use their um, self-publishing division, which is in Ingram Spark. But um, so they, I um, you upload all of my stuff to them, and then they distribute. So I don't have to do anything. But I know that it, they distribute to about seventy different online retailers. So I couldn't tell you all of them, but I know the biggest one is this Barnes and Noble and Amazon. And then um, it's also on, I want to say, is it like Kobo or Kubu or? Yeah, there is Kobo yeah, in Canada. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something like that. And then um, there's other ones too, but I can't remember. There's smaller ones, but I can't remember the names, but it's not like, it's not smash words because I know that's something that it isn't related to, um, the regular distribution, uh, but, and then our, it's, I think that's, um, Am, doesn't Amazon um, own something like, is it Amazon that owns the Smashwords or some, or is that different? I don't think so. It owns Goodreads, but it doesn't own, I don't believe it owns Smashwords. What, what was the, um, there was something that um, the self-publishing, um, before it was Ingram Spark, there was something like Create Source or Create Create something. Space. Okay, right. that, that's what Amazon owned, right? Because that's they Amazon, once, yeah. okay, because once that, before KDP, yeah, yeah. So then they that closed and and yeah. And, yeah, so yeah, that closed just as I was starting to get into it. So I guess I went straight into KDP and yeah. Then so and how about a website if people want to check you out? What's what's the um, it's LauraDeleoBooks.com. So Laura Delay all books, all one word dot com. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. And what's next in the Laura DeLeo universe? I am working on a, a book called Once We Were Witches, where um, witchcraft has been forbidden. Um, and it's related to a girl who um, could change everything for all of the witches because she was born into power that she has no idea about. So I've got um, my graphic designer working on the cover. So I've already pulled all the pictures and gave him what I wanted. And he's probably going to be looking at it like, oh, no. Because he, <laughs> he it's, it definitely always give him a, a huge challenge when I pull all this stuff together because all the pictures are have nothing to do with each other. And he has to put them all together into one. So, But I think it'll be, um, I, I don't have any doubt he'll be able to create a great picture from it. And do you have a timeline for that book, roughly? Um, I like to. So I like to pu um, publish once a year. And um, when COVID came, uh, I was working on the doll, and that 
I um, got furloughed from my job and then uh, then got laid off from my job. So my focus was not on writing. It was like, oh my gosh, you know, I need to find, you know, income and I didn't want to be on unemployment. Um, so but luckily I did find another job and, but it was like late in um, 2021. So I missed a year with um, COVID. So, but I, um, so, but I didn't have anything published in 2020, which should have been the doll. So the doll got published at the um, 2021. So hopefully 2022 will be, um, this book will get published sometime in the 2022. Awesome. Well, we wish you luck with that. Thank you. And yeah, thank like you for being such a good sport in dressing up with us tonight. To, <laughs> just, <laughs> we have a little bit of fun with Legends for Lurking. Uh, legends uh, for Lurking. Lurking for Legends, yeah. <laughs> so, before we leave, I, I just want to ask Christy, what's new in the Christy Stratosphere? Not a whole ton, but uh, I do have for Halloween, um, if you are interested in reading a short horror story, it's not like terrifying, but it is horror. It's called The, Sh the Subtlety of Terror. And uh, I did publish it a while ago, but it now has a brand new cover. So um, I only Ooh. released that a week or two ago, and um, the new cover is very exciting. So if you go onto Amazon and you look up The Subtlety of Terror, there's only one, and it's mine. Um, so that's only 99 cents. It's very short. If you get it on any other retailer, it is free. I just couldn't get Amazon to make it free. <laughs> so if you get it on Amazon, thank you for supporting me. You can also get it on my website for the same price, or you can get it free anywhere else. Um, so that is probably my biggest piece of news. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing NaNoWriMo, as Richard said, and I will be working on my second uh, NanoPunk book, which is the second in a an unpublished series. So I'm waiting until I have more books written before I start releasing those. So I officially decided that's what I'm going to work on. <laughs> so that is my news for this week. How about you, Richard? Yeah, no, I don't have much news. Uh, I'm just finishing up Dragon Sect. It's going to publish on or before uh, November 20th. It depends on when my printer can squeeze me in. So my goal is to get it out by November 20th and I'll, whatever the printer can print it, I will then upload it for Amazon and have it out the same day. So, and NaNoWriMo, I was going to just uh, work on a couple old novellas I had before. I just wanted to tighten them up and get them back out there. But with NaNoWriMo, I'm thinking, no, oh, the heck with that. I'm going to write the sequel to, uh, Dragon Sect is going to be called Windwalker, and it'll probably be another 150,000 word uh, tome. So it'll get me a third of the way there anyway. So, yeah. You'll That's be typing away. You'll, you'll blow it away. I know it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, if you do it every day, it's, it's about 16 to 1700 words a day. And yeah. I have the luxury that I write full time. So even being a slow writer, I should be able to bang that out, I hope. It all depends on what the season <laughs> does for us. But anyway. Next week's guest is uh, special to me. Uh, Louise Spilsbury is one of my original beta readers. So when I finally wow. decided it was time to take the plunge into self-publishing in 2017, late 2017, uh, she was the one of the people that uh, put up with reading my awful stories and <laughs> trying to make them a little bit uh, not as awful. So uh, it's going to be a nice talk to Louise. Uh, since that time, Louise has gone ahead and published her own science fiction fantasy book, which I might add is a wonderful read. I've already read it. She's allowed me to read it uh, last year or the year before that, before she actually published it. So it's actually a very uh, a great story. It's well written. And for the most of her life, uh, Louise worked in a chemistry lab supervising and analyzing uh, agricultural projects in support for food safety in our province here in Ontario. And after hours, she focused her passions on the three R's, reading, writing, oh, reading, riding, she's a horse lover, and writing with a W. Louise has finally realized her dream as a real-life sci-fi fantasy author. She just published a uh, re-released, I guess she had it out a little while ago, but she just re-released the book uh, on Amazon, and I can't wait. So for Laura, Christy, and myself, uh, thank you all for coming in and attending this with us today. We hope that you have an amazing week. Take good care. Thank you guys very much.